Hello everyone, welcome to my first video on Elite Dangerous. Today we're going to be talking about some basic flight controls. Now this is literally going to be a tutorial video pretty much, so if you're expecting any more detailed analysis of like dogfighting or anything, then I'm going to be uploading some more videos on Elite Dangerous, hopefully discussing some more advanced topics in fly mode, or sorry, in just flying in general. Um, so. Here's what I'm running with on my keyboard and mouse. Hopefully, um, you can keybind this to your liking as well. Make sure to change any keys that you want because Elite Dangerous is fantastic for the multiple keybindings. Gives you for probably every single option in the game that you can think of. So let's just get straight into it. In the tutorial level right now, um, on I think it's on a combat mission where we just got to shoot some random junk but I'm not going to be doing any of that, I'm just in an asteroid field showing you the controls. So my mouse movement is actually um, very simple um, on my left, moving the mouse left and moving the mouse right is your and uh, moving the mouse forward and moving the mouse backwards is actually the pitch. Um, the pitch is also, it should be automatically um, key bound to the mouse like that but the yaw will, you will have to change to have it on the mouse. So make sure to go in the options if you don't know how to do this. I should probably show you options, controls, and here is the multiple controls. Um, these are the mouse controls as you can see it, it details everything but as you can see mouse x axis is your mouse y axis is the pitch mouse sensitivity you want to be changing to your liking it doesn't want to be too aggressive on this it's not an fps so make sure it is probably doesn't need to be more than halfway as a flight control in this is needs to be very precise and when you're aiming at people you don't want to be like misfiring because you can't aim properly it does give you a great auto assist on this because of course it would be literally impossible if you didn't have the auto assist because it just generalizes in an area and then it will auto lock on as long as you can get it in the area then you're all right to shoot people but if you have a really high sensitivity you're not going to be able to do that very well um so yeah, that's the basic mouse controls. I also have head unlock, bounce on my mouse key, I think it's like mouse 4, and that is pretty much really easy. I like it bouncing my mouse as moving around in your um, cockpit. Moving your head in your cockpit should be one of the main things to do in dogfights and everything like that. So make sure that is bound to your mouse. Also, my speed control. Now this is where a lot of people differ. Some people like it as W and S. Yeah, I like it as throttle up is a mouse scroll forward and throttle down is mouse scroll backwards and that is just fantastic setup I absolutely love it I saw it on a post a few weeks ago and I thought I'd try it and it's just easily the best setup in my opinion I have it set up so it's 10 percent increments you can also set up specific keys to have um, set speed so if you say if you just press one it would be 50 percent speed and say if you press two it would be 100 percent speed these are all in the different speed modes um, so you can set it up if you want, but for me, I have my mouse scroll wheel is scrolling forward is throttle up and scrolling backwards is throttle down. So as you can see, throttle up and throttle down. And make sure it's set to 10% 10, 10 increments. You can have it, I think, 20 and then it jumps up to 40, I believe. You want it as small as possible. I don't think you can go smaller than 10%. I think it is set options on it. Hopefully they change that. I haven't actually looked into that too much, but I have it as 10%. As you can see, jolts a little bit forward, jolts a little bit more forward. You don't want it more precise than that, really. And of course, if you bind it to keyboard keys, when you press W, it will, it will just ramp it up like one little decibel at a time. But of course, the longer you hold it, the faster it will eventually start going up. So that's my setup for that. As you can see on the throttle, I wanted to mention this as well. You can see the throttle um, kind of graph indicated um, piling up next to the mini map and the thing that is going up and down right now. Um, the bar that goes up and down, as you can see, is what I'm telling it to do next. So I'm telling it to go down to that speed. That is where it's going to go. And the big blocks, the uh, little graph blocks, as you can see on it, I'm trying to explain this as best I can, it's not very good. Um, but a little graph plot as you can see on it is what the speed that the aircraft is actually going, or should I say spacecraft is actually going, and the little the little line that's going that's um, scrolling around the place is what I'm telling it to do next. So it's going to ramp up to that, it's going to ramp down to that, and the initial speed is going to drop down to that. The blue area is optimal speed. It's going to start um, controlling your speed for you. Tell, say if you're aiming for a planet, it's going to know when you're going to be hitting that planet. So it's going to try and ramp your speed down and ramp it up when necessary. It's going to try and do that for you. Um, so that's that's what my mouse does pretty much. I need to also bind another thing to my mouse. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I'm sure I will find a key for it soon. Because if you ever find an option where you're clicking a button, you have to move your hand somewhere on on um or not very nice. You don't want to move your hand that far to do this key repetitively, and you find you're doing it a lot. Make sure you bind that somewhere where you don't have to move your hand. So either on your mouse or on your left side of your keyboard, so you can keep on easy access to it. So. 
more keys then. So roll next. I have roll on Q and E. So rolling to the left is Q, rolling to the right is E. I find this is really useful as the yaw in Elite Dangerous is um, slow. It really should be slower and it is slow, so good on them for that. So if you want to be turning quick, you want to be rolling to the side and turning that way instead of just aiming there and then trying to turn that way because you'll just be spending hours doing it and you'll be a pretty much a dead target so make sure you're moving around because of course when you move around as well when you move to either side you're going to get a great view because of the wide cockpit angles that Elite Dangerous gives you so you're going to get a great view of the battlefield if you're in um, if you're in a dogfight and of course your head unlock move while you're doing that as well really works good so make sure you're doing that now, um, W A S D for me, uh, very simple, I'm going to slow down completely so I can show you this in effect. Um, w A S D for me are the throttle keys, so if I press D, it's going to throttle me to the left completely. No forward movements, no backwards movements, and it's going to fully ramp me up to that. And if I look to my left, you can't actually see them right now because it doesn't show you on that, but of course, and then my A key is going to be flying to the left. I'm going to slow down for that. And there you go. So WS, and want to guess? Now you think W and S will be forward, but as you know, it's actually on my scroll wheel for that. So my W and S is actually up and down. These ones are really useful for dogfights. Having them there is really useful because, of course, you'll hit your fly assist off and you'll be able to fly around and use these keys to control your ship. If you're that good, you can use your keys to control your ship really, really usefully in, in flight assist mode off and get some dogfights that are just phenomenal looking. I've only done like probably two that have looked like that because I'm not that good of a flyer, but it's been more kind of luck, you know. As I said, this is very basic flight controls. And that's pretty much the basics of flight controls. I don't think I can show you any more keys that are going to be that useful. Um, because once you master these, you can land at a dock, get some very basic um, you know, courier missions, and on the bulletin board, just pick up some courier missions and go and fly away and land. That's the main things you need to be learning to do. Once you feel like you can earn some money in killing people, then you need to be learning some advanced combat tips, which is flight assist mode off, and you know, boosting if you're going to be um, selling illegal goods in space station, you want to be boosting to avoid scanners, etc., etc. So I've shown you the very basics of the Elite Dangerous system. One last thing I would like to show you is in the bottom right you can see a tiny little graph that shows engines, systems and weapons. Now this is basically a power display kind of map. Um, initially it's just going to be um, two and two like that. Um, if I can get it right, it does tend to mess around a little bit. Or if I just reset it like that. Um, these are controlled with your arrow keys initially. If you want to change them anywhere, you can do. I think as the arrow keys, though, they're pretty useful there, as it's very simple to understand. So if you want more power to your shield, you just press the arrow key three times to the left, and it's going to bring full power to the shield, um, but bring down engine power and weapon power. So this is good if you're just about to die. You can bring out that last bit, a little bit, little bit of charge to your shield and charge them up a little bit faster. Um, but if you're just about to gun someone down, more power to the weapons, and if you're just in general flying, which is what, my, what I mostly do, courier around, all power to the engines all the time, you're going to be travelling faster, you're going to have a much more variation of speed, which is incredibly useful all the time. And generally, a lot of people have it to the engines, most of the time it's going to be um, like that in dogfights, uh, because, um, but then of course more advanced people will want to just, while, while in combat, change these systems, which is way too advanced for me, to be honest. Um, but that is basic control, so you've got your head unlock, you've got um, lateral movements, which is left, right, or down, rolls, yours, pitches, and throttles up and downs, and head unlock, I think I already said that one. And if you can master these basic ones, you can land alright, and you can fly from space system to space system, pretty decent, and that is the basics of Elite Dangerous. The very, very basics because it is an incre incredibly depth game that's going to be more depth upon release and upon every single patch after that. So, hopefully, you'll return to the channel and possibly look at some future videos that I may upload. So, hopefully, you've enjoyed the video, guys, and it's helped. Anything else you want help with, just leave it in the comments. Hopefully, I can help you if you'd leave a reasonable question that I can answer. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.